CCC family, it's Dawn Marie with Custom Cuffy Crochet and today I'm going to show you how to make a really cool gift that you can give people this Christmas or for Hanukkah or whatever you celebrate or for any gift at any point in the year and that's how to make these uh, feathers made out of yarn. Now uh, there's a lot of videos on how to make these, um, there's a lot with macrame, but I wanted to show you how to do them with yarn, um, sh uh, tell you what the best yarn to use is. A lot of times we see videos like this, they're hanging around Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, and we want to try them and then it just doesn't work out because, you know, they don't tell us the little details that we need to know. So I'm going to include those as best I can in this video today. So I hope you enjoy it. I've worked hard on it to make sure that I get all the kinks out of it. Um, and it doesn't have to be a bookmark either. You can make wonderful projects with these feathers. You can make wall hangings. I might try to do that in another video um, because they really are great fun to make and really easy, okay? So um, yeah, so let's get into your material. So for today, you won't need a crochet hook. So just a disclaimer there, you do not need to know how to crochet to do this, even though I am a crochet What you will need is you're going to need a pair of scissors. Uh, a darning needle might come in handy in this. I'm not sure yet, we'll see, but you might need one. Darning needle looks like this, or it could be a crochet needle, or you could just have a giant sewing needle. Whatever you wanna call it, that's what you need. Um, you're also going to need one of these beads. Um, and again, you do not have to use a bead for this, but I'm just telling you exactly what I used for mine. Um, I found these at Walmart, just assorted wooden beads. It's a really great deal, actually. This whole big bin was like five bucks over there in the craft section. Let me show you what the top looks like in case you want to look for these. Um, anyways, I thought it was a great deal for five bucks because I would use these a lot for a lot of my projects. Um, you are going to need some kind of glue. You can use whatever glue you want to. I am using a hot glue gun, but you can use fabric glue. You can use regular glue. Any glue will work for this, okay? So you don't have to have a hot glue gun. Um, you will need a little bit of, you could use fabric even. You don't have to use felt, but felt um, I think works the best for this. You want it to keep its rigidity. Um, because you are using yarn and not macrame, yarn is a lighter um, because it's usually made out of acrylics and stuff. Um, yarn is a lighter uh, thing than macrame, so um, you definitely want a basis for it. And even if you were just using macrame, um, just to keep the shape of your um, yarn or macrame or whatever, it really helps to use this felt. I've done them both ways. Um, and I really think that felt is the way to go. I think that it's really hard to keep its shape um, if you're using no backing whatsoever. But again, you don't have to use felt. You could use a piece of fabric you have in your home, anything you want to do. Um, but I think this is best. And by the way, these are 38 cents at Walmart and that's for the whole sheet. They have white and tan and gray and other colors. So I just put the colors that matched my yarn that was an actual perfect match. And so now let's talk about the yarn because that's the key to this whole project, okay? So as far as matching up the yarn, I got lucky with these grays and these, um, actually I should have, I did have some tan, but I, I ended up using a lighter gray for this one. And then I used white, um, but they have all kinds of felt colors there for you to match your yarn with. Okay, so believe it or not, these two yarns here are Dollar Tree yarns. Um, I've done a video a long time ago about Dollar Tree yarn. If you want to uh, watch that, it's in the description. I'll put it in the description box below. But um, yeah, so the thing with these feathers is that cheaper yarn works best, okay? I tried several different kinds of yarn for this. And as you can see for this one, even though this was a Dollar Tree yarn, um, it's... It's much curlier than, it, but this is curly too. I don't mind that though. I think it looks actually quite lovely for it to have a little bit of curl in it. It gives it a little bit of texture. But if you don't want that look, you know, that's something you might want to think about. Um, this one, I think because it was shorter than this one, as you can see, the, it was narrower. narrower. Um, and so I tended to curl up more and this one was really hard to brush, brush through. A lot of yarns are really hard to brush through. Now you could use, and that was another thing I'm sorry for your, you're gonna need a comb or a brush, a closed brush. I actually ended up taking a brush and cutting the top pieces off of it to make it more wiry. 
um, but a dog brush actually would probably work best for these, but I just didn't want to spend any more money on this craft. I really wanted to try to find uh, what I had at home, okay? So, but what I found works best as far as the way it looks, compared, comparatively speaking to macrame, is cotton yarn. It was the easiest to break apart. It was the easiest to work with. Um, and this is just some, I think some cheap Walmart cotton yarn here that I'm using. Um, and it really did, uh, it laid down the best. It was easy to brush through. I'll be honest with you guys, this took me a long time to brush through. I <laughs> got a long time to get it the way I wanted to get it. So those are things to think about when you're getting yarn. But I do wanna tell you, um, I know Hobby Lobby's got a horrible wrap, and but I love Hobby Lobby yarn. I really do. They have such a great selection. Um, and I tried to use some Hobby Lobby yarn, and it would have made a beautiful feather just from the colors in it. As y'all know, Hobby Lobby has beautiful colors. But the yarn was too good. It was too good to make a feather because it's it's like not non-pilling, which means it's really hard to get to pull apart. So, I mean, it was, I could not, I kept trying and trying and trying to brush through it, brush through it. It was horrible. So, try to stay away from your higher end yarns. They're not going to work out well at all, okay? But you can try around with things. I'm just telling you, like I said, I wanted to work out the kinks and tell you what I found out for Please these. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notify me bell below so you can get notified about my um, future videos. And please share, 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 guys. That helps so much for YouTube content creators if you share. So just to make my felt last longer, I'm just going to go down here and I'm going to cut up just like this. And you can make them as big as you want to, as long as you want, however you wanted to make them. Okay. And I'm making this a little smaller for our video, but there we go. There's my little feather. Nothing perfect. So I've cut out my felt. And now what I'm going to do is normally I would use um, a gray yarn for this so it would match. But I wanted um, everything to stand out and for you to see it. And I actually don't have cotton gray yarn right now. So um, all I have is the white. So I'm going to show you how to do it with the white cotton yarn. So what we're going to do first is we're going to cut a long piece of yarn. You want it to go past. You want it to go a little above the felt and a little below the felt, okay? So you're going to cut a piece of yarn like this. You're gonna double it over and you're gonna lay it right over, right in the middle here and right over your piece of felt here. Okay, so just like that. Now, if you want to, it might make it easier. I'm going to take some masking tape. You don't have to do this. I've made one of these feathers stretching out in my bed watching TV, <laughs> but it's not that easy. So, but I'm going to take a piece of this and I'm just going to put it right here just to keep my yarn. Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm going to just tape that right above this. And just so you know, I have my hot glue gun warming up right now. Um, if you want to go ahead and do that as well. Okay. So we have this right above there. We're going to keep that right there. And now we're going to start cutting um, pieces here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't know about, I'm going to cut pieces about 10 inches long. And I'm going to cut them in half. I'm going to go under this piece, just like this. And then I'm going to bring this piece through, just like that. And then I'm gonna make sure it either goes one way or the other. Whichever way you want it to go, that's the way we're gonna go. And then I'm gonna push it up. So this one is gonna to go to my left. And so that means the next one is gonna to go to the right. So I'm gonna cut off a similar piece of 10 inches. I'm going to fold it in half, and then I'm going to go under, and then I'm going to go through. And 
then I'm gonna make sure that this is pointing out this way. And then I'm gonna push it up. Just like that. So I'm gonna keep alternating those back and forth, okay? Now, if you wanted to take this down as well, you can. Mine keeps moving around. As I said, I don't usually use tape, but you know, I could see where it would help. So I'm just gonna tape this down as well because this is gonna show you how long you need, I mean, how, you, how far you need to keep going with your strands, okay? So again, I'm gonna cut another, and of course, also, you could go ahead and cut a bunch of 10 inch pieces, lay them under. You can do whatever you wanna do, okay? So again, I'm going to come up here. I just ended on one going this way. So I'm going to go the other way, just like this. And just pull. And again, and this time we'll go the other way like this and you can just pull these tight make sure that they're pushed up you push up as you go because if you don't push up as you go when you get to the end and you go to brush everything out you realize you're going to have to put more okay so just make sure you keep pushing up And then the other way. So just keep doing this until you get the length of your, your cut out felt feather. Um, like I said, you might want a little bit longer than the feather itself. So I would probably go like down to here uh, just to make sure that when we brush it all out, there's enough to come down, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video and I'm gonna finish mine working all the way down to about here. And then we'll meet back up again. I think that was fairly simple and easy to understand. So just keep doing that all the way down and I'll meet you back up in just a second. Okay, so now we have all of our yarn placed um, down our um, feather, felt feather here. And so now what we can do is we can remove the felt feather from underneath and I had it taped, so I'm just gonna have to pull a little bit more. But so we've pulled that out from there, okay? And that's gonna fit over this later. But the first thing that we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and brush out these um, ends here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this fine tooth comb here and I'm just going to start brushing, okay? Through this, just like this. And as you can see, it starts bringing all the pieces apart. Okay, so there's two sides of this cone. There's the fine tooth and the open tooth. And so after I use the fine, I'll go back with the bigger one. And as you can see, it's trying to curl up. That's all right, it's gonna come out good. So you're just gonna keep working that all the way down until you get all of these pieces worked out. Just like this. And it helps to place your hand here so it doesn't come undone or start flying anywhere. And that's why this tape helps. Okay, so you're gonna do that on both sides. You're gonna just keep combing it through on both sides. And then I'm gonna show you how to put on the felt and how to cut it all out. Okay, so I'll meet you back in just a minute. Okay, so we've brushed out all of our, our cotton yarn here. 
And I do want to tell you that I did, like I told you before, I used the fine side and the big side of the comb. Don't be surprised if you do get a piece every now and then, a piece of yarn that comes out. You get shedding. That is normal. I think over here we've got a long piece, you know. Um, also, you know, this is one of those things it would be really hard to be a perfectionist with. You're going to have some pieces that just aren't perfect. Um, but I did take an, also a, a brush afterwards just to get it all fluffed out. Um, just wanted to tell you exactly what I did while I was off camera. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is we're going to glue this piece of felt um, right on to the back of this, right down the line. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to take my hot glue gun. Remember, you can use any glue that you want to. And I'm going to go right down the middle here of my feather. Then I'm going to take the back side of this and I'm going to go around it like this. Put my glue on and now I'm going to press this right on the back going up the line just like this. Just like that. I'm just going to let it dry. And then I'm going to undo my pieces of tape here. Because I'm going to flip this over, in just a moment, okay? But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut around my felt, okay? So now that we've glued it, I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm just going to work around my felt template here. And then you can just pull away. Then I'm going to go to the other side. And as you can see, I left this piece down here. You can leave that for your bookmark or you can cut it off. It's all up to you, whatever you want to do. push that all to the side okay and so then we turn this over and we've got a beautiful feather okay and so then what I'm going to do is you can you know go around the edges and get that all perfect there and then I'm going to take a bead and I'm going to place a bead right up here at the top for decoration. And if it's hard to get through your beads, you can use a darning needle, which I think I'll do. just like this. And then I would tie a little knot very close to the bead so that it doesn't come undone. Just like that. And you've got a beautiful feather bookmark or whatever you want it to be. Like I said, you can leave these hanging down so that it'll fit in the book or you can cut it off, whatever you wish to do. But it makes a beautiful bookmark just like that. And then it sits right out the edge here where you can see where you're at. And voila. So it's absolutely gorgeous. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, please, of course, you can leave them down below in the YouTube section here, comment section. You can ask me anything you want, but you can also email me. I have a Gmail below. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on TikTok and you can find me on Instagram.
I enjoy seeing all your finished projects as well. So please don't hesitate to share those. I really enjoy it. So I'll see you again soon, guys. Happy crocheting. Bye-bye.